Hello, hello, you guys. Welcome back to another episode of the Inflow Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Oni B. And today it's just me, you guys. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how to do this. Like, literally, without Nadine, this is like such a weird thing. But Nadine is very sick today. And one thing we're not going to do is let you go another week without an episode of the Inflow Podcast. So, babies, it is you and I today. And I am actually so excited to talk about this with you. The topic of today is going to be black cat energy. And if you don't know what that is, hang on tight because I'm going to explain it all. But I have been having a little bit of a moment on TikTok with this whole black cat energy thing. If you follow me there, I've been having some videos pop off recently talking about black cat energy and giving you a bunch of tips and advice. So I'm just going to basically make one podcast episode, okay, this one right here, and it's going to be absolutely everything that you need to become a black cat. 2024 is the year of black cat energy. We are reclaiming our power. We are attracting things. We're no longer chasing anything anymore, and this right here is how you're going to start becoming the most confident version of yourself, okay? So that's what today's episode is all about. I hope you guys are excited about it. I'm excited about it. I hope that I do a decent job being by myself because it is totally a different experience when it's just you and a camera. And um, yeah, I'm a little nervous. I don't know, but I think it'll be it'll be good. It'll be good. I'm, I have a lot to say about this, so you won't get me to shut up. Before I go, I'm going to open up my Poppy. If you know, you know, I literally am obsessed with Poppy and I just, can we have a little ASMR moment? Hold on. I'm going to put the mic between my legs. That one, oh, I'm about to pass out. I also have allergies today. <laughs> Shit, that was not supposed to be part of the ASMR. should be a poppy ad oh my god the new title for this episode is now going to be black cat energy and asmr <laughs> because that was so good okay you guys black cat energy the black cat energy theory what is it what does it mean what are we talking about here okay so black cat versus golden retriever i'm sure you've heard those two terms so let's talk about it the black cat think about an actual cat Think about a black cat if you've ever met one before. They are so to themselves. Their energy is always protected. They never chase you. Literally, you have to come beg the cat to like hold it and praise it. It is the epitome of in my power feminine energy. The black cat is giving protect my peace at all costs. I am here. I'm the prize. And if you want something to do with me, you've got to do something about it period. That's what the black cat is giving, okay? Now, on the other side of the spectrum is the golden retriever, and I'm sure you heard of that, the golden retriever boyfriend, the golden retriever girl, whatever it is. The golden retriever is a really, really happy, happy dog. So, first of all, no shade to golden retrievers or like that type of energy, like that type of an energy characteristic, because I think it's a gorgeous energy, but there's a difference between being that playful, energetic dog that chases after things, that chases after the toys, that chases after you, that comes to your feet and wags its tail and begs for you to give it love. That's what the golden retriever does. The black cat sits patiently in its corner, doesn't need your love, doesn't want your love, but will purr if you treat it correctly and treat it properly, doesn't chase you. The black cat is not waiting at your feet, waiting for love and waiting for praise like the golden retriever is. So that right there is really the whole idea in itself. It's like how to turn your energy into someone who begs, someone who chases, into somebody who waits patiently and knows their value and just doesn't see the value in chasing after things. So the black cat, and especially in relationships, this type of an energy is extremely powerful and I have been trying to put into words this type of confidence that I've built over the years and like the type of energy that I have because it's definitely not the most generic type of energy and like confidence profile. 
And then I learned about the black cat theory and I was like, oh my God, that's it right there. That is literally the energy that I've been embodying for the last few years and working hard to fully like transform into is the energy of the black cat. I do not by any means chase after anything that is not meant for me, especially men, you guys, like especially men. (laughs) And I can't stress that enough. You guys have heard me talk about, you know, my own experience with relationships and dating over the episodes but yeah I think that I learned this big huge lesson in my long relationship when like I wasn't being treated properly in the beginning I did chase I was you know golden retriever-esque sort of speak and I I just took things that I wasn't cool with and I just let myself be treated not terribly but also not well and I just was lowering my standards with every year of the relationship like in the beginning you know you get flowers all the time you get taken on dates there's just this level of princess treatment and like I don't know just generosity that's shown to you in the beginning of a relationship and then as you get more comfortable it's like the bar gets set lower and lower and lower over the years and I was just allowing that to be okay I was like totally cool with it and it's like I don't know it's partially my fault because I just was allowing the bar to drop and I wasn't really doing much about it but I also didn't really know what standards I should be having for myself because that was my one and only relationship since I was 17 I didn't have anything to compare it to so eventually um, as I decided to end that relationship I was like oh my gosh I think I'm realizing that there's a lot of foundational things that I've let slip the cracks or that I've allowed to deteriorate over the years and I'm not cool with it. I don't actually I actually don't want to be in a relationship that's going to be so low effort um, because it's making me feel like just any other bitch and I hate to say it that way but like truthfully you do not want to be with somebody who doesn't make you feel like you're above and beyond extraordinary and I didn't feel that way but you know what's so crazy my confidence started to come outside if that makes sense my confidence was now residing when I would be at the gym because I would get all these eyes on me and I would get approached all the time and I felt like I I don't know I just had a level of confidence that was being built outside externally which was really frustrating for me because I'm like wow how come I can go outside and go anywhere in public and be made to feel like I'm such a beautiful person and wow like I'm so funny and I have this great personality but then with my within my relationship I'm not feeling like that at all like I'll come home and then I feel small and um yeah anyway long story short these were some things that I was allowing to happen to me as a golden retriever-esque type person um and over the years I started developing my confidence because guys I know that you know how it feels to be deeply insecure and rooted in fear and scarcity And I was definitely in my own experience of that in my relationship, especially in the beginning. And, um, you know, when he talked to other girls or he would do things that I didn't like, I was just like, this is really sucks and it hurts me. And why do you want to hurt me? And why are you doing this to me? But then I would like forgive him and we would move past it like nothing happened. After a certain point, I decided that I didn't want to be treated like this anymore. I decided that I... I deserve to be a confident woman who knows my worth, who's not scared to walk away. And truthfully, I think it was one of these experiences I had with him where I, I don't remember what he did, but he did something that really, really hurt me. And I remember packing up my stuff and getting ready to leave as I was just so hurt by whatever it was that he did. And I remember packing so slowly because I didn't want to actually leave. I remember waiting in the car when I actually did walk out waiting for him to stop me and he never did and I remember actually leaving and driving away but not actually leaving the neighborhood because I was not I didn't have enough I I I didn't have enough self respect number one and also just like felt so lost on my own that I really felt like I could not leave I didn't have it in me I didn't have the strength to leave And that was, I think, when I woke up. That was when I was like, oh my God, this is dangerous now. Because though my relationship is not abusive, thank the Lord above, I really didn't have a terrible experience. There was never any cheating or any like really bad malicious ill intent in my experience, but I lost myself in it. 
And I think a lot of people can relate to that, whether it's, you know, in a big way or in a small way, losing yourself and your partner is something that happens to a lot of people. And I definitely can say that I lost myself in my partner at that time. And um, yeah, I, I remember being like, I had to call him that day. I called him being like, why didn't you stop me? Why'd you let me leave? Like I literally had to like beg to be begged for. Does that make sense? And God, I just, now that I'm here in like this embodiment of myself, I just can't believe that I went through that and allowed myself to be treated like that. And it wasn't even, here's the thing. It wasn't even like he was a bad person because he's not a bad person. I love him. And even now, like I'll get into I me and my ex have been rekindling things a little bit. But at the time, especially as a immature boy, because we were young at that time, I was like 17, 18. He was like 19, 20. He didn't know any better. He was treating me the way I told him it was OK to treat me. Does that make sense? He wasn't like. If I had made it very clear that you can't treat me like this because I will walk away because I will choose to not be with you and I can have anybody else I want. So like I don't need this. If I felt that way and I made that very clear, he would have not treated me like that. He wouldn't have because one, he would have actually woken up and started respecting me and be like, oh, my God, I can't treat her like this because she won't stand for it. Or two, I would have just walked away by then. And I now that I'm grown and I'm like awoken in this energy, I can see, wow, like what a quick and almost simple fix that could have been for me. But I had no idea. I didn't realize that I was chasing after it. And I was literally enabling this behavior by my own behavior. And so hold on, poppy break. So yeah, I think that I think that that was one of the experiences, if not the experience that kind of like shook me awake. And so what started the journey for me was was realizing that I needed to find some density within myself. I needed to find some like middle like some sort of a foundational stability within myself. Like I needed to feel stable in my as myself in my core, if that makes any sense. I don't know the best words to use, but I needed to feel like weighted within myself. And so that's when I started doing yoga every morning and I started waking up earlier than him every morning because we lived together. And I started doing my own things that had nothing to do with him, okay? That had nothing to do with him. I started waking up and he'd be like, oh, you're up. Yeah, I'm up. And I ate breakfast and I already did my, my morning yoga and my journaling and my meditation. How about you? Like I started developing myself as an individual and as that happened I just felt this uh this desire to start making TikToks and posting on Instagram and doing content creation and starting a business like all these things woke up within me when I woke up for myself guys the confidence comes as a byproduct when you do these things for yourself like even just focusing on one small thing in your life that has nothing to do with your partner awakens a different level of confidence that you feel so much more powerful. Like you can attract things like you are worthy of any type of love that you want in your life. And I think once I started developing the sense of worthiness, I really truly to my bones believed that I could have the picture perfect relationship if I wanted to be with somebody who was going to open every single door for me buy me flowers every single week and do these small ordinary things that to me were so important and monumental then that's exactly what I would get that's exactly what I could attract and I really just taught myself to believe in myself so much and that right there was how the black cat energy was born I I truly truly just believed that I had the power to do anything that I wanted and even to this day you guys I mean as I get older it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger and that's something that I really want to encourage every single person to wake up within themselves because I living the way that I used to live when I was younger when I was chasing after everything I I was scared to lose my partner I was scared to lose my job I was scared to lose things in my life because I felt so scarce like if I lose this I'll have nothing if I lose this I can't have anything that's better than this it really all stems from a deep 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 sense of unworthiness and that can be 
that can be caused from so many different things in your experience. Um, you know, things that are happening right now in your life or things that happened in your childhood too. So I don't know. I really feel like one of the first things to do is to kind of like go back in time a little bit with yourself and, and try to retrace moments of feeling this feeling. Like if I were to retrace feelings of unworthiness, like I, I think I can really relate it to some of my deeply rooted insecurities that came from middle school and high school and stuff like that. Like there were so many things even physically that I was so deeply insecure about that like even just being bullied and made fun of about certain features on my face and stuff. I just have such deeply rooted traumas from that and I don't know I I think I really started to develop a deep level of insecurity in my physical appearance number one and yeah I, I don't know I think I wanted to really validate that sense for myself and I was just so scared that maybe I wasn't going to be pretty enough or maybe I wasn't going to be smart enough or cool enough or old enough that was another thing my partner was older than me and like when he turned 21, I was like 18. So I was like, oh my God, I'm not old enough. I'm not going to be able to go to the club with him or go to the bar with him. He's going to meet older girls there. Like I was always so on edge, dude. And now if I was in the same position right now, but with my mindset that I have currently and I was 18 and my boyfriend was 21, I would be like, if he meets another girl at the bar, then he's not my person. And I'm totally okay with that. And I literally can put all the trust in God and say, if this is meant to be, it will be. And if it's not, then it won't. So I don't need to waste any of my energy, any of my cortisol, thinking about what possibly could happen, what could all go wrong, because it's not my business, truthfully. It's not my business. Whatever happens is literally what happens. And I can't be sitting here so consumed in the what ifs. Like that is not my life experience that's not what I was put on earth to do I was not put on earth to sit and worry about somebody else's experience I was put here to have my own and so that's guys that right there is a major key DJ Khaled like literally I just I needed to figure out what my experience was going to be about what did I want to do what was important to me and guess what woke up within me this love for music, realizing that there was a huge, huge passion that I was just sleeping on every day because I was not giving myself the time or space. I was so consumed in my relationship at the time, like, oh, we're going to watch TV or, oh, we're going to go do this together. Oh, we're going to do that. We're blah, blah, blah. Fuck that, dude. Like, I'm sorry, but uh, I get so frustrated just talking about it because it's like, I really just was sleeping on myself. I was sleeping on myself. And I think a lot of people you know if you're in a relationship right now or even if you're not some of this energy of chasing not attracting comes from relationship experience that you've had I think that's one of the biggest places of trauma that we carry into our everyday life because you have one bad relationship that taught you that you're not worthy or made you believe that you needed to chase after love and it just didn't come to you naturally you carry that shit with you to your job dude you carry that shit with you in your friendships you carry that shit with you everywhere and I just I we need not just I but we we need to nip it in the bud right now that's it I'm over it. I'm over it for me and I'm over it for you. Okay. Like it's not cute anymore. We are, <sighs> this is what we're going to do. Okay. We're going to talk to our inner child. We're going to say, Hey girl or boy. Hey, I know you've been through a lot, dude. And I'm sorry that maybe I haven't been paying attention to you. Maybe you've been crying out to me, letting me know that you need me a little bit and that, you know, you want to feel heard and seen. And maybe I have been ignoring you and I am really sorry. And we can be gentle and compassionate with ourselves. Okay. We have to be, we have to be, that's how we heal. But after we give ourselves a big old hug, you know what we're going to do? We're going to pick ourselves off the motherfucking floor. Okay, I'm on the floor right now. I'm recording on the floor. I'm going to pick myself off the floor and I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and I'm going to say, you can do and be whatever you want. You can attract anything you want. Period. Period. I don't even care if you've never experienced something like that in your life. I don't even care if there's proof in front of you or not. It doesn't matter. Whatever you believe to be true is the truth. 
like I'm going to say it one more time, whatever you believe to be true is the truth. If you believe that you're not worthy, then you're not. If you believe that you are, then you are. If the minute that I rewired my brain into believing that I am worthy of attracting any love, any money, any opportunity into my life, guess what happened, fellas? It started coming without me even trying, without me even trying, okay? Wanna, I'll give you an example, okay? Poppy. I'm in love with Poppy. I buy poppies <laughs> ridiculously. I spend a lot of money on Poppy. And so recently I was like, I wish Poppy would send me some cases because your girl be spending so much money on Poppy. And I said that to a few people in my life. I was like, dude, imagine if Poppy sent me some and we could just have poppies on deck in the house. How fun. Poppy reached out to me on Instagram. Yeah. Want to know why? Because I attract it. I want it. I got it. I put something into the universe and I get it. And people might call you crazy if you talk like that to them. Who cares? Who cares? Dude, hold on. I need another sip. (sighs) Yum. Listen to this. You want to think, if anyone wants to call someone crazy, go ahead and call me crazy. I literally cannot even resonate with that word. So, as you guys know, music, biggest passion. Am I doing anything about it right now? No, I'm not. It's fine. Want to know why? Because I know that I'm in alignment at all times. So if it's not like perfectly aligning itself for me, then maybe I'm supposed to be focusing on the things I'm currently focused on and I'm cool with it. I'm not going to stress about it. I'm going to let life do what it needs to do. Okay. However, I am so aware of the type of lifestyle I'm going to have. I'm going to be in the public eye. I know that I'm going to make it in music. Do I have doubts? No. Why? Because I don't let myself have doubts, you guys. I kick them out of my brain before they can even convince me otherwise. Like, abs- I could absolutely sit here and think about all the ways that it might not work and all the ways that I might not get there and paralyze myself into ever taking any action. But why would I do that? Why would I do that? Instead, I have such a delusional belief and Honestly, it's not even delusional at all because if I believe it, it's the truth. And I have such an incredibly strong belief in myself and what I'm going to accomplish in my life and how successful I'm going to be that I am continuously talking about it to my friends, to my family. Like I'm saying, okay, but by this time next year, I'm going to already be doing this. So I probably can't go on that vacation that you're planning right now. Like I get so serious about it. That maybe there was a point in my life where somebody that like in my family or my friends like might have been like, okay, Ani, like you sound crazy, like be realistic. But they would never even say it to me directly because my faith and my belief in myself is unwavering. Nobody can convince me otherwise. Like I know I'm going to make it and that's it. End of sentence, period, at the end. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. And so nobody has ever really challenged my idea of myself because I truly believe because I believe it so much, they believe it just as much as me. And that right there is a perfect example of having so much confidence, so much faith and belief in yourself that literally it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Like I can't even hear. It's like I have filtered comments in my head. Like if somebody says the word realistic or like that won't happen, I just don't see it. The comments are automatically filtered out. The only thing that I see or hear back from people that I tell my dreams to is like, oh my God, yeah, you better be ready. Okay, so what are you going to do here? Oh my God, but that's so soon. So when are you going to get your passport renewed or like literally people are living this delusional dream with me because of how deeply I believe it. This is the law of attraction, you guys. We all know how it works. And it goes directly into having this black cat energy. To me, black cat energy is a phrase to remind you of this level of confidence and truly unwavering belief in yourself. So whenever I'm feeling like a little off, because it happens to us all, there's a few weeks out of the month where I'm not feeling confident, I'm feeling like a lack of focus, a lack of desire to do anything. So during those weeks, that is when I need to remind myself of this energy. So even just using the phrase black hat energy, Ani, turn on your black hat energy, what are you doing? Just like that, I can flip it on. So yeah, I hope that this was helpful. (laughs) Wow, I just got so passionate just now. I really love talking about this. This is literally like the whole embodiment of my experience on life, in life right now. I just love talking about it and sharing it with you guys. Um, but yeah, so this is the black hat energy, you guys. I really, 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 really want you to embody this and just walk around with this energy. It doesn't mean 
you have to have black hair and dark makeup i think everyone kind of has like an image of what the black cat looks like it doesn't it's not a physical thing it's a complete energetic thing okay it's completely energetic walking around like a black cat is literally just being in your bubble of elegance and peace and grace just being the person that walks into a room and literally lights it up like people are just so drawn to you and you don't even have to do anything. People want to come up to you. People want to give you opportunities. You teach yourself to start embodying this energy. Your life is going to change. It's going to change so fucking fast. And I literally can guarantee you that. Like, please, I want you to start saying this to yourself. I am a black cat. I embody this black cat energy. I am here. I'm showing up as myself. I don't chase. I attract everything that I want and need comes to me effortlessly okay when you continuously affirm those things to yourself things change okay and i think sometimes we just forget to affirm ourselves and forget to align with it but this is your reminder babies align with the energy tap into it and i'm telling you everything that you want is just going to come rolling into your life so beautifully if you're watching this on youtube or even if you're on spotify i need you to comment below I need you to comment, I am a black cat with a little black cat emoji. If you want to claim this energy and start activating it right now, I need you to comment that, okay? Let this be the very first thing that starts it off for you. Like when you press enter and submit that comment, it's on. It's done. It's sent into the universe. The black cat energy has been activated, okay? I am a black cat with a little black cat emoji. Done, okay? <laughs> All right, you guys, I really hope you liked this episode. It was a little solo episode with Ani B. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Comment the black cat comment. I'm telling you guys, very important. And give us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify if you want to. Nadine will be back next week. I'm so excited. And with that, you guys, I love you so much. I hope this was helpful. I hope you feel inspired, energized, motivated. Okay, and we will see you next Monday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't be late. Bye.